welcome back to the Beach Court Podcast, where we have Hurricane Milton coming down on us right now, um, and we will still talk to you about Pokemon, because that's what we like doing. Uh, but this time, we won't be, we'll be without Maddox. He's not able to join us. He really did want to join us today, but wasn't able to. So we have Matthew Wood kind of joining in for the second time. Uh, mm -hmm. The first time it was because mm -hmm. Parker was in the hospital, and now it's because Maddox wasn't able to join, so... You know, LDS been kind of yep. filling in that spot. Got to fill in the gaps. Got to fill in the gap. Yeah, but welcome back, uh, LDS. Literally and, uh, risking his life to be here. Yeah, literally. <laughs> exactly. <Obviously>. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so he's up north, safe from a, a hurricane. Hopefully, we'll join you in Louisville. That's the plan. Hopefully, that's the yeah. plan. That is Hopefully. the plan. Hopefully, but we got a packed agenda for you guys today. Uh, we haven't talked about Dortmund, Joinville, or Lima yet, so we'll talk about those results and kind of. Really think about what impacts to the meta will happen because of that. Um, and then after that, we'll kind of jump into our trivia. Just because Max is here doesn't mean we can't do trivia. Our listeners will be really mad if we don't. So we'll, we'll have sure. Parker and LDF kind of come to it. LDF, I'm not sure how much you listen to the pod all the time, but usually my go-to question is how many EXs are in the most recent set? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like plus yeah. or minus <laughs> one. Um, I don't have that question today, so spoiler alert. Okay, okay. I am um, ready for anything. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll jump into creating our tier list live with the feedback of LDF and Parker. Um, and then jump into our Louisville predictions. We've got some questions for the group. Um, and then we'll pick what deck we think is going to win. Um, and then you can roast us in the comments below after you press the subscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that's going to... You have to agenda. hit subscribe first. Though. Yeah. You got to mm -hmm. hit subscribe if you want to know what deck wins. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to work. But yeah, let's... Let's jump into it, guys. Uh, let's just, you know, see what's going on. LDF, what's what's going on up north for you, man? You had a League Cup this weekend. I saw you playing some some Goldango, some, yep. some cheese. Yep. Yeah, we what's on the cheese. On? What's going on with the cheese? You thought you think it was a good call, or what, what What made you play that this weekend? Yeah, I'm just testing for Louisville. I got Goldango up on my list of uh, top picks for the tournament for me. Um, I've, I've played Goldango before to a tournament, done well with it. So it's definitely a deck that I'm familiar with. Wanted to get some practice in. I'm not 100% playing it to Louisville. There are other decks that I am considering also playing, but I do have Goldango on my consideration list, and I thought I'd play it to a League Cup um, because I wanted to practice. And uh, yeah, yeah, I ended up getting top four in the tournament. I ended up losing yeah. in top four to my friend Justin on Reggie Drago because both games I uh, that I lost, I whiffed a knockout on a crucial turn to go 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So, you know, very close games. Uh I think the Goldango list I had is like pretty good. It's a few changes off of Yellow's list, but it's like pretty pretty similar. Um, and I've been practicing the deck a lot. I really like it. So might play to Louisville this weekend. We'll have to see on that one. But other than that, I've just been chilling, grinding out content as per usual. Um, been making a lot of like shorts and stuff on my channel. Yeah. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. So it's really just enjoying the content grind. I got a lot of content to make this upcoming next few days to prepare for when I'm away. Yeah. So the one time there's not a set coming out on tournament week and you're joining us. So. Good to have you, Parker. What about you? What's been uh, going on in your Pokemon world lately? Um, well, I uh, you won a cup I, last weekend, didn't you? I did. I won a cup with Charizard, and and honestly, it was a horrible experience. Um, <laughs> what I do you got mean? you don't like rare candy Pidgeot, rare candy Zard, counter catcher KO. No, I love that. It just never happened. Like, not even <laughs> close to happening once. Um, I got absolutely dunked on by the senior round one. Uh, he, he scooped because he was the only senior. And then uh, round two, me and Lugia went, like, draw, attach, pass, draw, like, attach, pass until one turn. I finally wrote him then to a Duskinor, Charizard, Countercatcher, your Lugia, and it was like, behind from there actually yeah. but um and then uh yeah round three played against guardy we both were like uh <laughs> i had to call for family for fez with the wrong pidgey <laughs> um and then uh Bro, got donked HP pidgeys these days yeah I mean, it's only because i didn't have the 60 hp one but it actually just worked out that game <laughs> um never punished never punish and exactly. then uh I got donked by Chris round four when Charmander pass. <laughs> um, round five, I won just barely, but I was like behind the whole time. And then uh, 
had actually really good top four games and then the finals game one like he bricked game two i got donked again and then game three was actually a good game but um i don't know zard's super strong but Yeah, like good deck. those games were so stressful and awful that i think it took me off the deck for louisville Yeah. and uh I've Wait, been uh wait, hold on. Breaking news. Parker took a deck off of the list of decks that he's willing to play to Louisville. Yeah, I'm only down to like 19 now. <laughs> yeah, that's <fair. laughs> um, but uh yeah, I, I don't know. I've been really liking this turtle deck. I've only like played a couple games with it, it's pretty absurd. Yeah, it probably Yeah, was pretty broken. Terrapagos Yeah. pretty good. We'll we'll talk about Terrapagos and all that in a little bit. Uh I did have a double cup weekend last weekend. Um, and I was able to, I walked into a room about 10 people big, which was kind of lucky, but it was because of the storm the previous week. Um, I saw three to four players with Lugia and I said, cool, we're playing thorns. <laughs> so, uh, proceeded to not hit any of the Lugias in the room. I hit two bolts and a Dragapult, uh, and somehow found my way in the top four. And then I did hit the Lugia in the finals to win. Um, uh, and then. The next day, a lot more people showed up. There was like 30 people. Saw some Dragapult, saw some Zards. And I'm like, well, if Rahul's been doing it, so can I. So I switched from Thorns to Lugia uh, on the second day. But I, I did lose in top eight to a Raging Bolt player. Meta manipulation. <laughs> yeah. Meta manipulation. Meta manipulation, Win the exactly. cup with thorns and switch to Lugia Switch the next to day. Lugia next You both day. won cups. If I won, I actually almost won the cup because if I won in top four, my friend would have just scooped me in finals probably. Uh-huh. So Yeah, I would have, we all would have won a cup this weekend. Dang, yeah. I, Dang. Almost. I couldn't close it out. I, Almost I tried, a trifecta. I tried, I tried, I tried. But yeah, so I played those decks. Uh, those are just more meta calls than anything. I don't really... I could I could never play Lugia to a major. I don't know how Rahul does it. Like, I'm just sitting there looking at these hands, and I'm like, bro. I played it once. I played it at Pittsburgh last year. I uh, got my winning in, but I will tell you, it is definitely an experience to play Lugia to a major tournament. It's terrible and best of one. The one time I played Lugia to a league challenge last week, and I went three and three because three games, I just had the attach pass for two turns and got like destroyed. So I don't think I would play Lugia to a best of one tournament ever again. Like I like Yeah. actually just wanted to not play the deck in ever again in my life, even though I think it legit was broken. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it still is, like you said, it is kind of a best of three deck. And let's transition now to kind of like reviewing the recent tournaments. Uh, I'm not going to share my screens or anything for those who are listening on, you know, the, the podcast platforms, but we are on YouTube talking up. You can see Parker LDF and my beautiful face. We'd love if you come over and press the subscribe button. But man, Rahul Reddy has been on an absolute tear this year. He has now top cutted three tournaments in a row. He made asymmetrical cut at Worlds, uh, made top cut at uh, Baltimore, and then lost in the finals to Dragapult in a very close set uh, with the same 60 cards. Uh, hasn't changed a single card. He had this, the tweet that said, I haven't changed anything since Worlds, since my sleeves. Um, pretty pretty good. What do you guys think about this, Luke? What what makes this list so good? And like he's doing so well. Is it because he knows it so well? Like, what do you guys think it is that's making him see the success? I mean, I think that's a big part of it, just like being super comfortable with what you're playing. Um, like it is solid. And like if you listen to our interview on one of our pretty V's episodes, he goes through, you know, like pretty detailed descriptions of cards and matchups and stuff. Um, I see that people are finally picking up on his list, but I see a lot of them playing like still a 2-2 Minchino somehow. I guess they're cutting like bundle in another card, maybe, Yeah, but like, yeah. but definitely like a good list. It's just good. Yeah, I really like the the Raikou. It's the Lugia deck that I've been mostly playing is the the Ruhu build. I think Raikou is really good just in general, really good into Pidgeot, really good into Palkia, good Mirror. Comes up in like random situations. It's a really cool card in the deck. And I Yeah. think that it turns his deck probably from like a more like, it's a little bit more of a toolbox approach because you do have like the 1-1 one, one Chino, you get the Raikou, the hand's weird here. But I think that the Raikou makes the deck a lot stronger because it's sometimes a better attacker to use against like Charizard over trying to set up two Right. Sinchinos to take Right. out their Pidgeot. So the Raikou, I think, does have a lot of value in the deck, and it is a very good card. So I'm a big fan of the Rahul 60. I do have Lugia on my list of decks. I might play two Louisville, um, and I do have Rahul 60 as, like, the 
probable like 60 to bring to the tournament if I'm going to play Lugia. So those so. keeping track at home, if you sit across from LDF, you could be playing Goldengo, Lugia, or random <laughs> decks if you're keeping track at home. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to know what my third pick is, though. I'll tell you right now. You do not want to know what my third pick is. It is diabolical. It's cloth. It's not a cloth. No, nah. it's uh, <laughs> I don't think my opponents want to play against me. So. Oh boy, it's mm -hmm. Snorlax. Uh, no, not Snorlax. I, I can't bring Snorlax or control to a major, but yeah, me either. But, anyways, yeah. let's talk about the rest of the results. So, Dortmund, uh, we had Ryuku finish first place with Dragapult, Dustnor, uh, with the crystal. Crystal comes out, we see its success and impact right away in the Stellar Crown format. Um, that crystal card just made it infinitely better, right? Like. We've known that turn two Dragapult attacks are very good. That's why Reggie Drago has been good for a while. So no shock to kind of see that doing well. Let's take a look at the rest of the top eight. We got Palkia, Dusnor. Um, Stefan ran that. Um, also another good deck. Um, Gold Dango. Mm -hmm, in, my at boy. third place, right? Yep. Yell's, Yell's been killing it. What are his results? I know he's got some good results with this deck. Yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, like, he's got... literally been playing nothing but Goldengo. I think yeah. he got second place in Dortmund earlier this year, too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, so he he, taught, he got second and third with Goldengo. The Dortmund god right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> literally is. Uh, we see Raging Bolt, uh, Thorns, Maridon, and Lugia. So no, the only repeat deck in top eight is Lugia, and Tord just missed out with Thrapagos and Dortmund. Um, and we'll see kind of how that transition to Joinville and um, Lima this weekend. But... One thing that sticks out to me about this meta, and I'm curious about what your guys' thoughts are, we had seven different decks in top eight. Is Do you think this is a healthy, balanced format, or is it more of like a, a square peg, like this beats that, but this beats that? So, like, it just depends on what matchups you beat. Like, what do you guys think about the meta as a whole? What about you, Abby? Um, you go first. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I, I think the format is very rock, paper, scissories right now. I do think we are in a go first meta for sure, though. I like I th I can't really think of any deck outside of the turbo decks that want to go second. Like Charizard, usually you wanted to go second. But I think if you're playing Charizard, you have to go first blind now. It's just you can't afford to go second into like Terrapagos or Palkia and then just have your entire board decimated. So I think a lot of the a lot of luck that comes down to like having a good run in Louisville, like unfortunately will probably be how often you win the coin flip. It, it sucks to say that, but I do truly think that if you're winning the coin flip more often than not this weekend, you're probably winning more games. And if you're losing the coin flip, you know, you're probably not. Now, if you're playing raging bolt or moon or Maridon, you're probably fine going second. But I think that like pretty much every other deck is going first right now. And I think that just losing the coin flip on average with a go first deck is just go, you're going to probably lose the set if like on average. So definitely a go first meta. I think there is a lot of variety though, but the variety is also just like the same thing where it's like these decks all have different game plans, but they're all trying to go first. So there isn't really like, I feel like while there's a lot of variety, there isn't a lot of exclusivity within how games are won right now. It's like, you're either going first or you're not like, Every game I lost at the League Cup this weekend with Goldengo is because I went second. Like, I'm going second against Reggie Drago. I, I naturally lost that game. But I went first. You know, I naturally win that game. So it's like, we're going to go first meta. Um, that's why I do think there is a lot of stock in playing Bolt right now or Moon. But, you know, if you're playing a, if you're playing a different deck, like, you're just playing that coin flip roulette, it feels like. Parker, what are your thoughts? Um, I agree with pretty much everything. Like, there's kind of, like, the archetypes, like, Turbo setup and then uh kind of like mid game destroy your board decks um and then lugia <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah it like feeling winning the coin flip is just like it's like busted again which it's yeah. kind of one of the things i liked about last format is like it kind of didn't matter if you won the coin flip or not but now you're just like well if i lose i gotta put 17 basics out or else they're all dying to like Dragapult, Duskador, yeah. yeah, all this Drago. stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen a lot of like the setup decks, like Charizard and Dragapult. I've seen some lists recently playing like four Nest Ball and four Poffin, literally because yeah. you have to bench multiple Pokemon on your first turn going second, right. or you like just lose the game to like three like Dusnors and a Tropagos. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's tough. I mean, at some point we got to figure out how to stop Dustnor, right? Um, yeah. I think, I think it's just the Enamorous. Is that what we've talked about? I think we talked about this before with the Enamorous. Like Such the... a bad counter, though. It, it, <laughs> if Enamorous was a one prizer, basic, I could maybe see it working. But the fact it's a two prizer, it's like, okay, I'll just like knock yeah. it out, take two prizes, and then go Dustnor. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't work. 
And it's only psychic <laughs> energy. So you can only play it in like Gardevoir, which isn't bad, but like it's not worth playing that in Gardevoir. Like there's yeah. better cards you can play. Yeah, so pretty diverse meta. I think your opinions are good. I want to touch on one thing you said um, that like Charizard needs to go first now. And while you talked about these turbo decks, while they can feast going second, Parker, I'll start with you first on your opinion. Should turbo decks be going first if they win the coin flip? Um, I think it depends on what you're playing. Like, obviously, none of them like greatly suffer from it, but like, I'm playing Bolt. I'm picking second every time just because, like, oh, like, my opponent started Trapagos or, you know, my opponent, you know, all this stuff. And, like, the dog potential is always there. Um, if you're playing, like, yeah, like, Bolts or Maridon or, or, like, Moon, I think you should still pick second. Interesting. What do you think, yeah. LDF? Charizard's going first, Turbo Deck's going second? Yeah, I 100%. Like, if I'm playing uh bolt deck or if I'm um, if I'm playing turbo this weekend, I am just going second blind. I'm just screw it. And depending on how the matchup plays out, like if I know I'm playing against a deck that has the advantage going first, then okay, maybe I'll change up my plan going to the next game and I'm gonna choose first this time. Um, so I'm still probably choosing second. Uh, because it's interesting too, because like let's say you're playing against Palkia and you go second and you get like turn one, like two prize donk, and you win the game at that point. Yeah. And then your next game, your opponent probably is gonna choose to go second, knowing that you're playing turbo. And then you're like, okay, I'm going first. Well, this gives me an idea of whether or not it's actually worth it to go first against these other decks. So mm -hmm. I still think you go second blind no matter what. But depending on how the outcome plays out, you can always choose to go second in your next game. Or just your opponent is just going to choose to go second anyways, knowing they're against Turbo. So, right. Yeah, interesting to see um, you know, what happens. And, and we'll get the meta percentages later when we do our tier list live. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Something else kind of like I think it stood out to a lot of people in Dortmund. Um, we saw Turtle not on the graphic day one, right? I think it was like just off and the best of the rest. And and day two, we saw it skyrocket to 25, you know, 15% mm -hmm. with 25 players in day two becoming the most popular deck in day two. So its conversion rate was insane. What do you think was the reason for people not playing Terrapagos in high numbers to Dortmund? Was it access to cards? Was it not sure of a good list? Was it, you know, we don't think it's very good right now, um, but then we see all the success, right? So what are your thoughts on kind of like why it wasn't very heavily played in Dortmund? You want me to go first? Sure, so. go for it. Yep. Uh, so to me, when I first read the card, I was like, this is a good card. Mm -hmm. It's splashable. You can glass trumpet to it. You can do a lot of cool things. But like, what's the advantage of it going like, like why not just whatever Maridon's attack is turn one? Yeah, which you can't with Terrapagos. But the way the deck's played now is like you basically go all one prizers and then just like slam it down, counter catcher, set up all your guys and like knock out stuff. And it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like it's got a super solid game plan. Very easy to power up. All you need to do is just Pidgey off for the energy or, or whatever, and you just, you just go. Like, like it's 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 good. So you Definitely think that good. the reason why it wasn't played, if I'm paraphrasing you correctly, was people didn't really understand its power yet? Yeah, that, and then, like, I was kind of on the train, like, why is this better than, like, turn one yeah. frenzy gouging? Yeah, whatever. yeah, yeah. But Interesting. It, yeah. it, 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 it kind of just is sometimes. Oh, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I think Terrapagos is going to be probably in the top five most played decks in Louisville. Um, it is coming off of that ninth place finish uh, that Tord had in Dortmund. And we all know the Tord effect is real. Not to mention, there's been a lot of Terrapagos masterclasses from like multiple different players right now. That's going to drive up its popularity. 100%, like it's going to be one of the top decks in the tournament. I'm personally not playing it um, because I don't want to learn the deck or anything. I think it is a bit of a complicated deck. I don't really feel like learning about it or whatever. And I think that it is still a very good play for the tournament if you know what you're doing. I don't think like if you're last minute switching to Tropagos without practicing, I think you're probably just going to get bodied. But it is a deck that I feel like if you put the time and effort in before the tournament, it's probably a good play. It's going to be popular. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a good deck. I think that, you know, a lot of people are saying that it's S tier. I wouldn't go that far. I don't think there, I don't think there is an S tier deck right now in the format. But yeah. I think that Tropagos is also very good. And it has advantages and disadvantages over the other Dustnor, like go fast turbo decks. But I think Tropagos is a good deck. And it's definitely going to be very popular, in my opinion.
Yeah, I think it's going to be top three most popular, and we'll get into that yeah. later when we finish up our tier list. Uh, so let's move on to Joinville. So same weekend as this. So this tournament really didn't kind of like have that meta to go off of. Um, it really was kind of a, a blind meta for them. Uh, they had almost 600 players down in Brazil, so awesome showing there. Uh, yeah. We had Lugia take it all the way down, all the way down with uh, uh, very close to Rahul's list. No, he plays the Wellspring, a one two, a two two Zinchino. So no Raikou, no no Lightning energies, no Vessel, and that's kind of how they fit that in. Uh, but beat a Terrapagos. Terrapagos was took second and fourth place, um, and I think the surprise of the top eight. Cloth is back, baby. <laughs> um, fighting weakness is relevant again now that yep. there's no Arceus and now we have Terrapagos. What do you guys think about this Cloth deck here in third place? Are we going to see like some success in Cloth going forward? I think so. Uh, <laughs> like, I think people will just, you know, hit their A matchups and, and, you know, day two with it. But uh, it, it it's not like an auto win versus Terrapagos by any means. You can still just like Dusk Noir stuff and like it, mm-hmm. I I've only played the matchup once online and I won as Terrapagos. But it's like <laughs> it's not like I don't know. It, it's definitely terrifying to sit across. <laughs> um, I mean, they got to turn one doctor until say. two, right? You go Terrapagos yeah, past. They're like, mm-hmm. do. all right, sick. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Oh, yeah, if you were shaking your head, no, when I asked the question. I I don't know how that deck, outside of maybe even just barely beating Tropicals, I don't think it's beating anything else. Like, I don't see how it's beating Lugia. I don't see how it's beating Charizard. I don't see how it's beating Palkia, Dusknor. I don't see how it's even coming close to beating Dragapult. I think it's a cool deck, but it feels like just a deck that you have to run hot, you have to hit the right matchups, and... I don't know. It's just I. I don't think the deck is that good. Okay. I think Cloth it's a cool Electrode deck. has a fifty-two win percent online with eighty-eight matches. Its matchup data says sixty-one percent against Raging Bolt, sixty-four percent against Zard. 52, the Raging Bolt matchup, I can fifty-two percent against Dragapult, sixty-eight percent against Terrapagos, um, bodying Thorns, bodying Snorlax, uh, losing yeah. hard to Gardevoir. Losing hard to Drago, losing hard to Palkia. Yeah, I see. That's that's what I'm talking about, man. That deck it loses to all those like other decks, and I I don't know, man. I think that deck is like it's I mean, a cool if we deck. think if we think it's a triangle square format, it's just another one of those decks you just like hit the right matchups, right? Yeah, but I, I, I don't know if I want to if I'm gonna play a deck like Cloth that is like fun. I would rather just play like Goldengo or something, that's where fair. it's like. You, you're having fun with the deck because you're drawing like a million cards, but you're also like a very good deck that actually has a shot of beating most top techs in the format. So that's my opinion on uh, Cloth. I just feel like it's a cool deck. It's fine. It's cool. It's fun for the ladder, but I don't know. Playing it to a major just to me just doesn't sound right. It's it's not bad. Maybe if Lugia underperformed in Dormant and Joinville, I would consider it a better deck because the de- I just, Cloth literally, like I, I don't see how it's being Lugia at all. Yeah, but I mean, you got the resistance and stuff. That's so yeah, fun. they could just yeah. sit there and tank with Lugia the entire game and they'll just win the prize trade. It's like impossible to beat that in my opinion. Yeah. It's a cool deck. It definitely is like, I mean, it is kind of a go second deck, so you kind of get those like cheese wins with like Petron or whatever, but I don't know. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not sold on cloth. I think it's just, I think it's kind of a fluke that it did that well, but it's not terrible. Like literally if you just hit like nine Tropagos, you're, you might get day two, but I, you know, you're probably not going to hit nine <laughs> Tropagos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's move on to the last event Um, since we've since talked about results and that's Lima just yep. happened uh, this weekend. Um. Really great thing to see a special event in, um, you know, Latin America, getting a day two, uh, 308 players, um, our own Steven, um, did get what 10th place was it? Or I don't know. He got top 16. Uh, one of our friends, Steven. Yeah. Zach got top 16 too. Yeah. Zach got top 16. So some, some people from North America went down and got had good results, uh, but no one in top eight, which has been a, a big point of discussion on Twitter today. If you've been uh-huh. everywhere, we'll talk about that in a second. But Tropicos ended up winning it all. So Tropicos took it down, beating Raging Bolt in the finals. Uh, we had four Dragapults in their top eight. A Gardevoir, a Charizard, a Bolt, and a Tropicos. So pretty unique meta with Dragapult kind of dominating there. Um, is that showing anything? Or is that 
kind of an outlier with 308 players, a smaller tournament. Um, I think it like Dragon Pole was like hot off the win um in Dortmund, so people were kind of just like, oh, this deck's really good, kind of thing. Um, but like the deck is really good. So I mean, like I wouldn't say it's a fluke, but it's like maybe overrepresented. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also like to point out that Giovanni, uh, the winner, got yeah. second and Joinville. So second and Joinville just, and then won this. Kid is in the turtle club. Pretty really sick. Yeah. I think it's his first year of Masters, right? Isn't that what I heard? He looked young. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if he is, but... Yeah, I think I saw go. it as like his first year of Masters. Um, but yeah, I mean, any anything stand out to you, LDF, on these results? Yeah, I mean, Trabago's winning a big tournament kind of is pretty massive going into this weekend. I think that alone also will drive up its play. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised to see Dragapult do well. I think Dragapult, even though it did is coming off that like win hype where a lot of people are just trying it out now, I do think Dragapult is like a legit, like actual, like really good deck. Yeah. Um, like I'm not surprised to see it being half the top eight. I, I think Dragapult is legit that good. It does have a bad Reggie Drago matchup, but like I feel like it actually is fine into most other decks. Like maybe slightly unfavored versus Lugia if they set up against you. But I think you're beating everything else except for Raging Bolt and barely beating Lugia. I think you're fine into every other deck in the format. It's also just like, it's like very similar to how Red Drago plays where you just have this massive Dragon Pokemon by turn two swinging with Phantom Dive. Yeah. Phantom Dive is the strongest attack in the game right now, in my opinion. It puts, you're putting 260 damage on the board in one turn. It's ridiculous. So I think Dragapult is going to be popular in Louisville. I think it's a solid deck. It's a deck I've been practicing a little bit myself because, you know, I've, you know, I've been considering it myself for Louisville because I like Dragapult. I've won like three cups with like Dragapult before. So like I'm like kind of high on the deck. Um, so that's definitely a deck I've tested a little bit. It is a little like clunky and a little like slow, but like I kind of like the no Pidgeot build because you don't have to rely on Pidgeot. You can focus on your Dragapult, which I think is pretty good when you're trying to constantly chain Pult every turn. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think we're keeping track at home now. So now we're up to three decks. Um, mm -hmm. so interesting it's gonna be fun <laughs> there, there's uh, a couple more there's a couple more decks two more decks we'll, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna later. say guys if you listen to the beach court podcast you're getting it all fresh here uh and if you're not you should tell your friends that they're stupid right so um, <laughs> Whoa, anyways I mean, I mean. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> um anyway so that's gonna do it for our results discussion um and we'll jump right into our tier list prediction um, and meta prediction. But before we do, I need to thank our sponsor, uh, Nakama Anime Cafe. Uh, we currently are represented by Nakama. We love Nakama. We had some good times last week. Um, and hopefully we can play some Pokemon this Wednesday if the hurricane stays away. Mm -hmm. uh, and then next month, we got Nakama Con. We'll be bringing back the kind of defeat the you know Elite Eight our final four people again so Eight. make sure you make sure you come out and try and beat us to to win your share of pokemon prizes at nakama Khan. more details to follow next episode um but let's go ahead and jump in uh we got a trivia question we gotta do real quick so are oh, you guys boy. ready for the fun trivia question uh, i'm LDF always ready you guys get to work together um right. this is a, <laughs> a question i'm looking for two decks um and you have to get both to get it right all right According to limitless online tournaments in the Stellar Crown format, only two decks have a win rate greater than 55% with a minimum of 100 games. What are those two decks? Hmm, 50%. I, it's interesting because I might kind of know this because I do look at a lot of the online tournament results for, like, videos. So, like, uh, I want to say, hmm... I think I have my two decks. They're kind of diabolical, but I, I think I have my two decks picked. I have a feeling that one of them is like Drago or something. I Maybe. didn't. I was not thinking of Drago. No, not Drago. Okay. No, they're, they're, the two decks are kind of it's diabolical. Like it, are, these are like it's cringe, to be honest. <laughs> what are the what are the two that you think? Uh, the There's... first one is Snorlax. I was going to say Pidgeot. I was thinking Pidgeot too. Like it's it's tough because Pidgeot does really good, but I think I feel like I see Snorlax have more results than Pidgeot, but control is definitely a good pick too. I, it could be one of the two, but I'm gonna go with Snorlax for my pick. Because yeah. it does really good in the EU late nights and stuff. That is true. And most people in online tournaments do not know how to play against Snorlax properly, I think. That too, yeah. I was gonna say, like, I know it's not Guard of War, 
<laughs> nah. Um. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm cool. Locking in Lex is one of them. Okay. Uh, yeah. My other pick is also kind of cringe, though. I was also thinking Claw Thorns. Because, like, I've seen Thorns do really good in the past, like, week or two. It's, like, actually, like, legit right now. So I want to go with... I My other pick was, was Claw Thorns. Like, both these two decks, I feel like, are the picks for this. That is true. I, I got to think about, like, it's online and, like, you know, the, the mm -hmm. dad that goes to work and gets home at 7 p.m., kicks off his shoes and, like... logs on plays in these tournaments and like yeah he probably doesn't know how to optimally play against thorns or whatever yeah exactly but like so yeah i i, I could see that i think like my my guess would probably be drago as the second one just but but i think yeah i, I could see thorns you we'll, guys gotta i come think to we'll a lock you that wanna come in to a consistency or you want to both have your two separate guesses I'm down for the two because yeah, I'm I'm locking in Thorns and Snorlax for my picks. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Yeah, we can. I, we we can do we can do those. Parker, what are you? You're locking in with him, or you want to do your own? I'll lock in with him. Okay. I think, I think he studied the okay. online results a bit more than I have. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Parker, sometimes you make great decisions. Sometimes you don't make great decisions. Ooh, this is one of those times where you made a great decision, Parker. Okay. Oh, yeah, what he was talking about. Snorlax and Quad Thorns both have. Wow, five percent win rate I online knew it. tournaments right now on Stellar Crown. I knew it. Yeah, because every time I do an online tournament video, like recently, and I just recorded one not too long ago, like Thorns and Snorlax are like almost always in top eight, yeah. and they're winning tournaments too. Uh, yes, yeah. like Quad Thorns, like Cal won the recent like, night with it. Like I was like, it's got to be Quad Thorns. Like I see that deck in top eight so much, and Snorlax. Like I just remember seeing those decks in so many top eights when I'm recording. So I'm like, it's got to be those two. Wow. Dang, I should have I should have dug deeper for the trivia question. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, that was a good one. Well done, well done. Well what's done. the bottom well two? Yeah, the well bottom done. two. Yeah, yeah, what's the bottom two? <laughs> All right, next up, we'll jump into uh, our tier list creator. Thing brought to you by Trainer Hill. So yep. Trainer Hill, thank you for having an awesome tier list creator here. Hmm, I gotta start using that. I use uh, the tier list maker website, but I've seen people use Trainer Hill. I'm too so lazy to out. make it, and like I know you've got time, and I see the great things you do, and your tier lists are awesome. <laughs> I just, I just ain't got time to go make it. So That's usually fair. when you have one out there, I'm like, all right, we'll use that one. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I, I don't think I, I didn't search too hard for it today. Usually Maddox does that for us. Yeah. But since he wasn't here, we didn't get that done. But yeah, let's jump into it. So uh, we got S, A, B, C, and D, pretty usual. Um, let's just jump straight into it. What decks are belong at the very bottom that are not good plays for Louisville? You guys throw out what your mm. thoughts are. On this tier list, I the only deck I can think of is Cloth. But even <laughs> then, I think it's I don't actually like every deck on this tier list I don't think is a D tier deck. A, yeah, I don't think there's truly like any of these decks are like a bad play. Yeah. Um, I can see I'd, any one of these decks make day two. Yeah, I'm I think kinda... like oh, go ahead. I was gonna say like cloth is probably the worst because yeah. like It's the biggest victim to match up roulette, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my thoughts were kind of like, I don't know, Palkia Noctel maybe it belongs down there as much as I love that deck. like, And just because I tested it so hard and I know like how well it didn't do, that maybe that's where it belongs. Um, you know, because Palkia Dustnor is a little different. It has a little more routes you can take. But Palkia Noctel and even... Turbo Moon, I, I, I don't know, because, like, you're not hitting that 230 number, right? So you're going to be mm -hmm. gouging against, you know, Terrapagos, and then you have to worry about Dust Norris and stuff. So I don't know. Tur Turbo Roaring Moon and Palkia feel pretty low to me, low plays. Um, I'll just start. We'll put down all the stuff that we know is lower, and we'll, we'll find a reason for it. Not the Dingo. I, okay, I'm going to be honest. I think Goldango is a B-tier deck. I think Goldango is actually, like, a legit good deck. Um, but I was gonna say B two, beef is for sure. I, I, I meant to grab a different deck. That was totally trolling. No, you're oh, good. You're oh, good. Oh, oh. No, no, no disrespect to the Dango. Sorry, Abby. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um. Okay. So I got these three cloth. Let's let's find the homes for these three P cloth, Turbo Moon, and Palkia Noctowl. What do you guys think about these three? Hmm. So yeah, I mean, Turbo Moon is probably the worst Turbo deck you can play right now. Um. 
I think there's just more merit to playing Maridon and Bolt. But Turbo Moon isn't terrible. Like, it's probably C tier. Like, the only D tier deck is probably Clov, in all honesty. But I, I think Palkia Noctowl is also C tier. The thing I like about Palkia Noctowl is that it's, it's still good. It has lines. You can do Prime Ketra Cologne with Noctowl. Yep. You have Area Zero, so you can do more damage. You're not as like relying on combos like Dustnor is, because you can get the combos with Noctowl. You don't have to like draw into them all the time. But if I'm playing Palkia, I would probably rather just play the Dustnor build. That's why I don't think Noctowl Palkia is as good, because I think it's inferior yeah. to Palkia Dustnor. But it's not yeah. a bad deck either. I agree with that. Parker, any adjustments to these three? You like them where they are? I like them where they are. Okay. I do. All right, let's jump into somewhat of the control category, and let's get these out of the way. Iron Thorns. Uh, How B-tier. are we feeling about Thorns? Definitely B tier. Um, my like Thorns is insane because it's beating like all these different decks that are like not really respecting it. Like Charizard is probably not playing Cologne. Uh, I've seen Drago cut Cologne recently. Uh, Palkia Dusnor is like a close matchup. As long as you can take out the Froakie, the matchup is pretty free. Goldengo is a free matchup. Um, Pal uh, Tropico's Dustmore isn't bad thanks to Enhanced Hammer. Uh, Raging Bolt's decent. Like, it's legit. And obviously, Lugia is like an auto win if they're not playing Flutter Man, which I don't think they will be. So, Thorns, I think, I think, I is think Bolt's a favorite matchup. Bolt's, yeah, I think, Bolt's, like, close. I think, Bolt's close. I think, I think Bolt is favored in the Thorns when played correctly. Yeah, it is a very close matchup for sure. I think Thorns mm. is legit B tier. I've, this is the other deck I talked about. I would, I would play to the tournament. It's a deck that I've had on my radar for a little bit. Um, because like it, it's a cringe deck to play and it feels bad to play a deck like this to a major tournament, but like <laughs> it does feel like this deck actually is like a very powerful deck right now. It also just feels good to just auto win potentially one of the most popular decks in the room, Lugia. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's that has some merit for sure. Parker, what are your thoughts on Iron um, Thorns? I I agree with like everything you said. Like I am not a fan of the deck. Like I'm not going to play it to Louisville. So cross, I'm only down to 18 Jeez. decks that I could play now. But, um, oh, the up up to four, and you're down to 18. 18 yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's only yeah. getting bigger. But uh, I think B is probably like where it would be. I think maybe not quite an A tier, and then like C tier is like a little too low. I think. Okay. I, I think it's a good play. I think Lugia is gonna be up in that top three spot, honestly. And uh, yeah. just to have a almost auto win against you know a top three deck, pretty good to me. Pretty good, mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. All right, uh, moving on to Snorlax Stall Parker. Where do you think this one belongs? This one's so hard. This is like, is it though? I, I mean, like, what what is it beating? Like, when when you're playing against a player that knows what they're doing, like, what do they beat? Like, are they just beating Trapagos because there's not many switch cards there? And like you can just like shove Mimikyu's and stuff. Like, I just don't. I don't know what Snorlax beats. I don't know. It's hard to say, but like, it. It's interesting. Uh, it is. I think Snorlax's worst matchup right now, out of the popular decks, is probably Lugia or Palkia Dustnor. Right. But I think you're beating almost everything else. Tropicos is also very close. Any deck with like a ton of dust snore is like difficult. But like Snorlax always has been okay into Raging Bolt. It's you know good matchup against Charizard. It's Drago Bolt matchup also. It's kind of like Charizard where it's like probably pretty close to even. The Drago matchup can be close too. Um, yeah. It has a lot of close matchups, but it's not a bad deck. It just you have to like the problem with Snorlax is like it's very uh, very simplistic of what it's trying to do right. compared to like Pidgey control. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't I, was, know. I think I think this probably just belongs in like B. I was thinking B or C. I was, yeah. yeah, I think B. I, I always tease my friend because he plays Snorlax a lot, and I'm like, all you do with that deck is play a supporter and instant charge. Sometimes you counter catcher, sometimes you pokey gear, but that's all you do with that deck for the most part. <laughs> uh, yeah. Draw. The other thing with Snorlax though is nobody's gonna play. I know it's respecting it right now, so that does True. it does have advantage. True. Yes. Yeah. I will agree that Snorlax is in a good spot because people are disrespecting it. I just think you've got some bad matchups toward the top. All right, last control deck, Pidgeot Control. I think I think this deck is very good. I'm gonna start off. I, I, I'm gonna say this is an A. I think Pidgeot Control in a in a good player's hands who knows what they're doing. What do you, I don't know what they lose to except for itself. Uh, I I think it's just basically like Snorlax. I I think it's a B tier deck. I don't think Pidgeot Control is 
insane right now. It's it's just because of like all the random matchups in the format right now. It also has a bad Lugia matchup too. I have seen some controllers play the Diancy, but I think that Lugia is still like a bad matchup. Your Tropicals matchup is also fairly close. It's a, like it's a decent deck, but yeah, I would still call it a B tier deck in my opinion. Um, it's okay. Um, the other thing with Pidgeot though is. Everyone who usually plays Pidgeot Control are, like, actually, like, they know, like, they're good at the deck. Like, right, it's not a yeah. deck, like, a random player is going to just pick up. Right. I think you actually, like, have to be good at, like, the deck to play it. It's not like Raging Bolt or Charizard or Regidrago where, like, anyone can pick it up and do good with it. Right. This is a deck you actually have to be good with. So you'll usually see the, like, good players, big names playing the control decks to success. So that does merit its warrant is that most of the good players will be on Pidgeot if that's what they're playing. Yeah. Parker, you're the you're the deciding factor. We got one A, one B. I agree. Uh, I think just this versatility, like I, I don't really think it just straight up loses to anything. Like I guess I haven't played a single you know, like Terra Pagos game into it. Like yeah, you could probably oh I won second. They dust on my Pidgey, knocked out my Rotom, and I can't do anything now. But like, it, like I think it's probably like A. Or like if not A, like on the cusp of A. Alright, we'll put it in A for now. We'll put it in A for no. now and we'll revisit it towards the end. Alright, uh Elias favorite deck called Dango. The Dingus. Go I'll let you lead us off since you're the you're Goldango's strongest warrior right now. Yeah. Goldango, I think is a B tier deck. The way I look at Goldango is it's the second best Palkia deck you can play right now. Um it's basically a Palkia yeah. deck with, with a draw engine that can attack and big do big numbers. Uh yeah. Yeah, Goldengo is pretty nuts. Uh, it has the ability to have a one prize board state before you do anything if you really wanted to. You don't have to put Palkia down right away, knowing that you'll give up the first two prizes. You can play Greninja and Cologne. You have a really good draw engine. You also have an insanely beefy Pokemon. Like, Goldengo is surprisingly tanky in a lot of matchups. It's surprisingly pretty good. Its worst matchups, though, in my opinion, are going to be the... Uh, Maridon's close now because of Raikou being able to one-shot you. Before Maridon, I thought it was like very favored, but now that they have a way to yeah. one shot with Raikou, they can go yeah. amp Raikou Raikou for a game. But yep. Goldengo, outside of maybe a bad Maridon matchup and a really bad Iron Thorns matchup, the Thorns matchup is like almost like unwinnable, <laughs> in my opinion, anyways. Uh Goldengo's like a decent pick for the tournament. I think that it's a solid play. It's a very fun deck to play too. It's not a deck that you really have to do a lot of thinking with, though. You do have to do a little bit of sequencing with it. It's like fairly straightforward. You're just drawing a bunch of cards and just like spamming retrieval and stuff it's a really fun deck um and I mean, it does have the power level of palkia so. it struggles in all the all the control decks right all three of them no it's it's close no, you, uh, you can just put gold angles on the field and then what Attack yeah i played against energy. i yeah i played against the control deck at the cup i was at and i beat them i thought it was an unwinnable matchup i offered the id knowing they were playing control before the match started they didn't accept it and i ended up winning the game anyways i mean they got a little lucky with like finding penny but like at the end of the day you can like greninja their mimikyu you can Greninja the Pidgeys. You can yeah. basically you just don't put like Bibbrel and Fez down. You just have like you go Gold Dango, Palkia, Greninja. You basically are playing roulette with Eerie and Misfortune Sisters, though, because you've <laughs> got to make sure you don't you have to make sure they don't yeah. mill your your switch and prime catcher and your canceling clone. If any of those three cards get milled, you're probably losing the game. But you have Turo in the deck. If you're playing Yellow's list with the jamming tower, you have an even better matchup into control. Snorlax is a bit harder to beat, but it's also not that bad. It's it's actually not that bad. Literally, as long as your Prime Catcher and Switch don't get milled, I actually think the matchup is like fine. It's I'm saying, not like, Snorlax benches three three Mimikyu's like bruh. No, nah, you just attack with Greninja. You have yeah. like unlimited energy basically. As long as you're not milling your retrievals, you have yeah. you can That's just fair. sit there and attach to Greninja over and over again, That's and you can. Fair. You can use Retrieval and Ultra Ball to discard Bibberol and Fez and your other Gimme Ghouls. You can even attack with the Gimme Ghoul if you really have to. That's true. It's actually not that bad. It's, okay. it's a close All right. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Parker, yeah. B tier? Higher? Lower? It, it's weird because, like, there's a part of me that almost wants to put it higher just because, like, you can do single prize and then 2-2-2 two, two, two your opponent. Exactly. But it's, uh, I don't know, like... I've played it in the past. Like consistency was a little bit of That's an issue. Too, yeah. yeah. Um, so like I think B is like good. Do we really think it's better than Turbo Roaring Moon though? Yep. I I do. Yes. Okay. It's surprise. Sure. It's really good. Like okay. it. The fact that you can trade so evenly is insane. Like from what I've experienced with the deck so far, um, is that 
like against Reggie Drago, for example, you can like even though they have Radiant Charizard, you're like, oh, you just lose to Drago. They can just go Radzard twice. How do you beat that? Well, you do because you can just go two, two, two. Like it's a very easy deck to go two, two, two with because of the yeah. amount of draw oh, you I, have. I agree. Yeah. And um, you can go two, two, two against one prize decks. You have the ability to use Greninja turn two, which is ridiculous. Yep. The deck is like it's insane. I think it is legit okay. a really good deck. Yeah. All right, I'll leave it in B. We'll look at it yeah. a little bit. See where yeah. see where we're at. It's in the middle of B. If I had to, if I had to classify where it is, it's like in the middle. All right. Uh, moving on. Everyone's favorite psychic Pokemon, Gardevoir. <laughs> this deck is just like it's it's it's. I feel like it's underrated, but it's underrated because it's got like a couple like super polarizing matchups in the format. Yeah. And like Briar being a card now, like. I feel like yeah. Terrapagos is probably very favored. I've never played the matchup at all, but I would think Terrapagos is very favored in the Gardevoir. Mm -hmm. um, but are we putting it in C tier? I mean, obviously we don't think it's A or B, or sorry, S or A, but like, is it worse than the B tier decks? Yeah, it's, I personally wouldn't play it because it, it just gets blown up by all these like big, like, Dustnor decks. Uh, your Zard matchup is a lot harder now thanks to Briar and Dusknor, and even your Dragapult matchup, which usually was fine beforehand, is actually, like, I think unfavored. I think Guardi has too many unfavored matchups right now. Drago's not a great matchup. Maridon's not a good matchup. Lugia's not a great matchup. It just feels like what's there's so many decks. What's a good matchup? You think so? I said, what's a good matchup? Oh, what's a good matchup? Uh, if we're Charizard, saying it's got if... all these bad matchups, does it belong in D? No, it's not. I It's still, like, a good deck, but, like, you know... It's a deck that a good player can always do good with. It has still like comeback potential, but it definitely, oh, definitely. feels like a C tier deck in my opinion. Yeah, I would say I agree. Like we'll one make day two, yeah, but like, 100%. like uh, it's off my radar. I've I've seen too many too many Ralts attached passes. Wait, so you're opinion. telling me you're down to seventeen now? Seventeen, Ooh, right? Hey, 17. It's right, dropping. Right. It's dropping. Okay, all right. All right, moving on. Uh, let's keep it going. Palkia Dustnor. A. I, I like this deck. Yeah, yeah this is an eight. This is an obvious eight tier, in my opinion. I think, I think it's, it's a good play for the tournament. Yep, I, I think do. it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be very popular. Really? Um, yep, it's uh getting a lot of hype right now. The deck is like actually legit. It's very very good. Um, it literally can win the game and like it's like Terrapagos, but like it's a little different, but it's very similar to Terrapagos, except that you have like Greninja. Um, Greninja EX and Radiant Greninja are both ridiculous in the deck. Radiant, or Greninja EX specifically turns all your bad matchups into favors. It's crazy. Um, yeah, this deck is A-tier. It's In my opinion, it's one of the most obvious A-tier picks. Wow. What do you think, Parker? Yeah. you agree? I agree. I mean, Palky has a card. It's disgusting. Like, you're playing against the Area Zero deck. Boom, he's hitting for a million damage anyways. But just, like, being able to just destroy any, like, like, People that got to put little guys on the board, you just go Dusknor, Radiant Greninja, or Dusknor, Greninja EX, and they're just like, they're cooked. And then, like, you go Gr Radiant, or you go Greninja EX against Maridon. Like, like it's it's uh, definitely pretty crazy. It's All right. Like, I'm good with it. I think it's a good deck. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good with it. Um, all right, what do we want to go next? Let's go, let's go Charizard, everyone's favorite Charizard. Are we dropping this down from A tier or are we putting an A tier? That's where we need to start. I personally think it's a B tier deck right now. It's still good, but I don't think it's the best play for the tournament by far. It's not, it's not, it's not the best play for the tournament. It's still oh. good, but I don't think it's I you I can't personally see myself calling it an A tier deck right now. Because... What answers can Charizard do for the Buffalons? Not much. Does it, does it have anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The best you can do is Dustnor them. Oh, you got a Dustnor yeah. one of them. Okay. Yeah. But even then, like it's yeah, and the base with Charizard is like you're going first. You're not gonna get a great turn two, and if you go second, you're probably just going to have all your Charmanders get completely, like, board wiped. That's my issue with Charizard right now. It's still a legit good deck. I think it's still, like, a very good B-tier deck, but I don't think that the deck is as good as it was, like, going into, like, Dormant or whatever. Yeah, I think it's, like, it's, like, 8.5. It's, like, okay, double like A. 8. Okay, we'll put it over here. Okay. Yeah, the other issue too, like the the only good matchup it truly has right now, I feel like, is literally just Raging Bolt and like Maridon. Everything else is like yeah. pretty 
like pretty unwinnable to like unfavored. Um, I mean, I think yeah, I think maybe it could be cloth. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you okay, have a yeah, good. You could... might have a good cloth matchup. Maybe. <laughs> oh wait, don't they have the electrode that like one shots you? Yeah, yeah but they, we go, have they go. Electro, they go electrode <laughs> glasses. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know. Char Charizard's cool, uh, but like you're losing to all these decks like Dragapult, Reggie Drago, uh, Lugia, Tropicos, Palkia. Like, I mean, you're taking bad matchups into like most of the big decks. Like that just doesn't feel good at all, in my opinion. All right, all right. Moving on, we got two Tropicos decks. Let's jump into both of them. Um, first off, Parker, what do you think is the better Tarapagos deck? Dustnor or Pidgeot? Well, I mean, obviously Pidgeot does play Dustnor too, right? But yeah. this is, let's just, uh, let's just remove this, right? I mean, everyone's playing Pidgeot now, right? Yeah, it's basically the same For the list. most part, yeah. Yeah. The, the ones that aren't are playing, like, 4-4, four, four, uh, Knock Towels and, and, like... Yeah, I think we can remove that. Let's just call yeah. Tarapagos Pidgeot. Yeah. All right, uh, LD, if you referred to it earlier, you said no S tier deck. It's definitely A tier, though, for sure, though. Um, yeah, it's going to be very popular. This tournament toward, I think, really helped hype the deck up. All these master classes I've seen online. Yeah, it's an easy A tier pick. Definitely one of the top plays for the tournament. Very popular deck. Uh, yeah. Why do we think this deck isn't S tier? It's, uh, I just don't think it's been, like, optimized yet. I also don't think that the, the just, it doesn't feel like the meta, due to, like, the whole, like, coin flip RNG of the format right now, I just don't think any deck can be S tier, because there's no deck in the format that can ultimately just win the game because of a coin. Like, the coin flip just decides too much. Like, if Tropicals goes second, probably losing the game. If it goes first, you're probably winning the game. That's, it's just, like, you can't really call a deck judge S tier. And you go, it's fine, right? You just do, like, massage and just play judge going second, right? Yeah, you could, you could. But nah, I, I don't know. I, I think Tropagos is just A tier. Yeah, it, there really just can't be an S tier deck right now just due to how the format is. But it is an A tier deck nonetheless. It's probably debatably the best deck in the format besides maybe Lugia. Yeah. What do you think, Parker? You think it's S tier or A tier? Mm, it's hard to say. Like, I, I would say truly I haven't played enough games with it. But like every game I've played with it, like one almost, but I am like lower on the ladder. Yeah. Although it has me playing as Masters players every game. Yeah, it's a live great for you. ball. But yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean it, it it is crazy. It's like consistent. I mean, I think that's why it's going to be my top pick going in. Uh there's a bit of skill expression in it like mm -hmm. um I think that like you could argue for S. I think maybe the most S ish tier deck is probably Lugia to me, but I will. I mean, like if Lugia goes not... first, they can iron hands, right? Like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's what makes the, it. That, the thing that I think holds Lugia back though is it, it's Lugia. You get those like you get those Lugia the, hands. Yeah, you start. You know, you start in Chinchino or Minchino, and like one aroma, and then you hit heads on the aroma, and you have to like. Oh, Chinchino pass like attach like yeah, it's like yeah. How's the yeah. how's the Drago Terrapagos matchup? The who? Reggie Drago and the Terrapagos. Who's favored there? Ah, uh, whoever goes first. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, it's a coin flip matchup. Um, Drago Drago's a V star deck, right? So yeah, we'll just go double dust nor Tropicos counter catcher knockout Ugh. Reggie Drago V and Gross. you won't have a Drago V on the board and then you lose. Gross. It's a coin flip. It's a coin flip matchup. Same thing with Palkia and Drago, Palkia and Tropagos. It's just 50 50s across the board. It's just coin flip matchups. Whoever whoever attacks first wins. <laughs> wow. Most All part, right. Yeah. Sick. Okay, so oh, we much. got five decks left on the board. Let's go to Maridon next. Where do we think Maridon falls? Uh I in my opinion, I think it's a solid B tier deck. Uh it's fast. It goes second. It's pretty good into like Palkia and Tropagos, because you can either go Iron Hands or you can go Maridon, Raikou for a two prize KO in most matchups. So if you're against Tropagos, they try to not put a Tropagos down right away. You just go Iron Hands, right. initiate the two prize trade. They can still like double Dusk you or whatever, which is kind of annoying, but it doesn't feel terrible when you put on all this aggression early. Palkia is like fine. Uh, they have the Greninja EX, which is a little scary, but if you can amp the Froakie turn one, usually you're chilling. Right. Yeah, you got to amp the Froakie. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think, Parker? Where do you think Maridon lies? It's like. Like I don't want to put it in A because like the Zard matchups rough, yeah, blah 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 blah. But like 
like it, it does have the potential to go super far and like plus like people are gonna be handing you uh area zeros on a silver platter for your raikou to just <laughs> smack them with um <laughs> so yeah i i i don't know i think it could creep up in the a depending yeah on, well, I, I think i think I know if there what... was ever a time for Maridon to be like the like the play like this is the tournament where like it's the play and, and i've been a big Maridon hater on this podcast for a very long time because sato is just better than generator it's more consistent mm -hmm. um yes it's harder to find and you know things happen but i mean Mar if, if charizard is down Maridon is up that's just like that's just kind of like how Maridon goes yeah um and, and i think it has a good i think it's the best turbo deck there is i i don't and i think it's i think it's close it's a tie between Maridon. i think raging bolt is maybe better but it's close I don't know because like Bolt, Bolt, so Bolt's also losing to Zard, right? Like I don't think just because you have this guy, like you're beating Zard, right? So, mm -hmm. but Bolt's not beating Tarapagos, and Maridon is. Yeah, man, right? I guess. Like yeah. so, I think Maridon's the best Turbo deck there is. I think I think Bolt, you got lines. If you play the Bravery Charms and you just charm your um, Ogre Ponds and like. You take advantage of their area zero and replace it, like get rid of your squawk. Like, I think from there it's like really hard for the yeah, that's fair Africa stack to win. But like, I guess like the list that don't play charms or like that stuff. Like, yeah, it, we'll, we'll just have to see. Honestly, mm -hmm. I, mean, I just feel like because like you're always benching Greninja, so they can always go like hit into you plus Dusclops KO, and then next turn Dust Nor Briar and like just take a four prize turn. Um, because you can't charm all three things, right? You can't charm both Ogre Ponds yeah. and Greninja. I don't yeah. know. I found the I found the matchup to be extremely unfavored for Bolt. Yeah. Um, but I'm okay with putting Maridon in B tier. I just I don't know if I don't know if I can sit here and say Bolt goes in A and Maridon goes in B. That's fair. Well, I yeah. can. I'm I, I I just I just think Bolt is not better than Maridon in the current meta, like the meta that's going on and what's happening around it. Yeah, I like mean, Maridon Marid can force these Dust Nor decks to not be able to Dust Nor. Yes, it can, <laughs> and then like, mm -hmm. but you could also, you know, like play two generators and hit one energy. Sure, off of them sure, but you can stuff, also draw is... fifty cards and miss the Sada, right? Like that's just yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It's just yeah. I, like... It's weird. I think Bolt's a bit more consistent than Maridon at taking knockouts every turn, but Maridon has the ability to use like Amp and stuff, which is like pretty good. What do you think? Where, where, where's where's Bolt going? Is I kind of want to say it's right on or above. Hmm. I I mean, I guess with it, I I think it's better than Maridon, but I don't know if you can call Bolt an A tier deck. Every time it does well or it's popular, like underperforms in the second day, or like it's not it flops day two. Yeah, like right. its conversion rate is awful. Well, I think the deck somewhat carries a little bit. Not saying like people that play it are bad or anything, but it's like it's very it's like so straightforward and like mm -hmm. you just. You know, Teal Dance, Teal Dance, Sada, attach, knockout. You know, next turn, Teal Dance, Teal Dance, Sada, attach, counter catcher, or prime catcher. You know, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, it, I, I, I think it's A, personally, because yeah. my hole is clenched every time I play against it. <laughs> but, like, like, no matter who's playing it, honestly, but, like, and it has the tools, technically, to beat anything but like, i don't know i think it has a slight edge against me right on all right guys we gotta do something here we gotta we gotta create a new deck <laughs> called Wait. coin flip yep ah that what's is our, s tier what's our uh seismitoad 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 i mean goldango it's a coin pokemon but it's already I mean, on the it tier list is... it's already, it's already oh, that's list. true it's true that, yeah, right? yeah there we go Seismic Toad X S tier, one hundred, hundred percent of the meta. Is it gonna prediction. let me do this? No. Is mm -hmm. it gonna? Oh, it will. Oh, five hundred and fifty-one percent. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we're definitely doing that. That's funny. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, those of you listening on the podcast platforms, we just put uh, coin flip in S tier because it's the only S tier deck there is. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. One thing I will say probably about the next deck you're going to drag up is like if it's Pult, I think has a good Maridon matchup. 
if you don't get turn one hands, but a bad Raging Bolt matchup, no matter what happens. True, true. That's fair. Yeah, so, so let's. Oh, you alluded to it, Dragon Bolt Pidgeot. Um, we just saw it get you know dominate Lima this weekend. It won its last tournament that it was out. It's last major, um, you know, in Dortmund. So is this a is this a tier deck, Dragon Bolt Pidgeot? I think the Dragapult non Pidgeot build is A tier, yeah. but Dragapult in general, it's solid. Like I think it's A tier. It's actually pretty good into the uh it's actually pretty good into like Palkia and Tropagos. It's not that bad at all. And it, you know, it beats Charizard. It can beat the big turbo decks. The only one, well, Raging Bolt is unfavored, but you can put Rizard back in the deck if you want to make that matchup a bit better. Yeah. No, we did it again. Oh, what happened? Oh, oh no. It's because you change if I when I change the thing here, mm, this happened. It just last adds time it, yeah. It's, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. But we'll just like click the ones that aren't already on the tier list. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to find. I'm trying to put this guy on mm -hmm. list. Oh, no. Okay. Where I'll did he go? This, I'll clean this up later and send this to Trainer <laughs> Hill. I know he saw the, he saw this exact thing happen last time we did this. And yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. It's all good. You what? I can't all even right. drag the things anymore. You what? Okay, Dragapult yeah. Pidgeot is going into A tier. Yeah. Um, and then we had yeah. Lugia and something like Ray. I think it was Drago. Lugia Drago. Lugia and Drago. Were Lugia and Drago, Drago. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Goodness gracious. Okay. All right, Lugia. Where is Lugia fallen? A tier for sure. Yeah. It's going to be extremely popular. It's 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 arguably going to be the most played deck. There's a good chance it's the most played deck in the tournament day one. Yeah. Okay. I'd call it that. A tier for sure. I'm on that same boat, although I think Bolt will probably be the most played just a little. It'll yeah, yeah, it's a toss up. I, I think Lugia overall is like a deck that it'll win more games because you actually like do stuff where like Raging Bull usually wins games because you get lucky or like you just like donk your opponent. So I it depends really on whether or not people want to choose agency over just like just turbo like Raging Bolt. Kale the active and Rar, see where yeah. it goes from there. Yeah. Because Lugia, you do have agency over like the game once you set up. It does have that issue where if it doesn't set up, you know, if Lugia consistently got turned to Archaeops out, I think it would be S tier, but because it yeah. has inconsistencies, it's probably A tier. It's probably behind Tropagos. Okay. Yep. I think, I'm, I'm yeah. following with that. What about. Uh... I, think, I think that's a coin flip matchup, if any. Yeah, it's a very big coin flip. A coin flip yeah. if you go first, and a coin flip if you set up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That too, yeah. Um. Okay, so last up is Reggie Drago V Star. Where do we see Reggie Drago V Star? That's interesting. I don't know if it's A tier anymore. Um, I know some big players are on it in Dortmund, but I don't know if I can call the deck A tier right now. Um, a lot of it's good matchups like Charizard, Gardevoir. They're falling off. And that's not good for a Reggie Drago. It's not a terrible deck, though. And it's just the coin flip meta, man. Like, you're just playing against these other decks that want to go first. When Drago always wanted to go first, it feels pretty bad. Um, it's, like, fine. You know, if you like playing Drago, play it. Uh, I think it's B tier. Right now, it's B tier. Maybe top of B tier, but it's B tier for sure. Really? Yeah. I don't think it's... I, I can't really call a deck an A tier deck right now. It's just not... It's not uh, just in the right spot for it to be A tier. It's, it's good matchups are starting to get less popular, and it's 50-50s are more popular. You're just not you're not taking those like good matchups across the board. Yeah. So like bad matchup into Lugia, bad matchup into Bolts, like all the winnable, like very, very hard. You it's, have to play yeah. like out of your mind and they just have to exist kind of. Um, yeah, you need to get lucky. Yeah, you need to use Radzard. It's 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 not unwinnable for sure, but it is very like close. Yeah, like if Bulls can be popular, it's not good for the deck either. And again, you're just taking these fifty fifties to Tropagos and Palkia, where it's like it's whoever goes first. Like I don't know if if I was to play a deck that wants to play the game on a coin flip, I would maybe consider like Tropagos or Palkia or Lugia over Drago. Drago's also like not always getting turned to attack anyways. At least with Tropagos and Palkia, usually yeah. you're attacking turn two. <laughs> Drago is not always doing that. A lot of the time, you have to waste Legacy Star just to find an energy switch, which feels really bad. I definitely did not attack turn two a lot of my games in Baltimore. So. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's our tier list. Uh, give me two seconds. I, I cleaned it up a little bit. Um, so second one? 
Well, so that we can uh, add the uh, meta predictions. Um, Mm -hmm. problem is, I did it one time and I forgot gold dingo. So I Yeah, got to go back yeah, and yeah. do this again. Dang it. Not the dingus. I always forget That the dingus. dingus, bro. How could you? I don't Exactly. know, man. You know, it's just it's just not a good deck. <laughs> it's just Yes, too it in, is. it's just way too inconsistent for me. That's the that's the problem. You know what needs to happen? It needs to be four Ultra Ball, four Poffin, four Capturing Aroma, and the rest of the deck's just energies. Well, yeah, and I just hate that like they don't play many like ultra balls, so they just have Yeah. to find it. And like I, I know that like you draw a lot of cards and you do just find it sometimes, but I don't know. I, it just scares me. So give me two seconds. I'm almost done here. No Um, worries. I'm gonna put the coin flip back in. I'm gonna get this fixed with Trainer Hill. I remember this happened last time too. Yeah. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What did I miss? Uh, can't top. Uh, are we going to take? No, that's there. I think this is everything. <clears throat> okay. Um, let me just fill it out real quick and then we'll get back to this. Dustnor goes here. Pidgeot goes here. Palkia, Dustnor goes here. Uh, we said Lugia was A. We said Drago was B, is that what I heard? Yeah, I show yeah, B and A for Lugia, B for Drago. Okay. Sorry about this, those of you listening to the podcast. This is not that great. That's my bad. I forgot. <clears throat> Ooh. I know, right? Ooh. Boo. All right, Pumpkin Octagon goes there, Turbo Moon, and the Dawn. Okay, 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 we got it. Yeah, we got it. On the fourth try, we won. Okay, share screen. Going back to this guy. I think. Yep. All right. Okay, so this is our meta chart, our meta breakdown chart, our coin flips at 100% meta. So let's jump through and break down what we think. What's the most popular deck in the room, gentlemen? <laughs> I I, think it's Bolt. I'm going to go with Lugia. Bolt and Lugia. Okay. Um, Eric's how do I feel tiebreaker. about that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to not say Lugia, right? Like, like Rahul doing so well with it. like, three times in a row now. Like, that has to catch on with a lot of players. Yeah, exactly. And it won Joinsville. Like it, it Lugia almost won both tournaments. Like Yeah. it's it's also one of the only decks that like kind of can keep up with most of like the big like Dustnor decks. Also, Lugia is a deck like compared like Raging Bolt is popular. I think it's definitely gonna be at least second most played, if not, you know, first, right? But Dust uh Raging Bolt is always memed on for just being like a bad deck that like only wins games because your opponent like bricks or you go second, you get like really lucky coin flips where Lugia at least has agency. A good player can go far Lugia because there is actually more skill and lines involved than just like Raging Bolt, Go Burr, Sada, Pokemon Catcher, Prime Catcher type stuff. Yeah. Which is Yeah, maybe I can more get attractive. behind I can get behind Lugia being up there. Um I don't know if it's be the most play. That's so hard to say. I, I really do think it's it's a good time to play Lugia. I I think it might actually be most played deck. That's that's my take, anyways. All right, well let's put some numbers on this. Let's just say Lugia is number one and we'll put Bolt a little bit behind it. I don't think Lugia's ever passing twenty percent. No, unless we're in Silver Tempest meta, this is, we are long So what do we past think? that. Like uh fifteen percent third. Like somewhere around there? Yeah. I think sixteen, fifteen. Nah, I, I was I was gonna go with like fourteen, twelve percent, but sixteen, yeah, that might be just be more accurate actually. Because I don't know if like the most popular deck in the room is gonna be less than fifteen. That's kind of where I'm at, right? Yeah, there's a lot of variety right now, which There is a lot of variety. I would agree with that. I mean fifteen is probably okay for Lugia then. Well, let's just do Yeah. sixteen and fifteen. How about that? Yeah, that's We'll fine. go. We'll go with that. Our third most popular. I think. I think it's Tropicos here. Honestly, Yeah, I was Tropicos it's 100%. either Tropicos or Dragapult, right? Like one of the two. Yeah, I, I think Tropicos has a better chance to be more popular just because of all the hype big players have been given the deck. With the Masterclass and stuff, very good chance. It, it ends up being like 13%. Yeah, that's kind of where I was in my head. Was too. Parker, you go with thirteen percent Tropicos. 
yeah, I think so. <clears throat> okay, so do we think Dragapult next, or are people are still playing Zard? I I, I, I do can... think it's going to be Zard. <laughs> I I do too because like it's just like what people know. Yeah, people like Charizard. It's also like people's first tournament, and they there's like Charizard's good. Okay, let me play Charizard. It's still probably going to be at least ten percent. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm comfortable like saying ten. Yeah, even though I don't think the deck is like the best deck for the tournament, and I think that a lot of players who play it who probably don't you know practice much with the deck are probably just going to get absolutely just farmed but it's going to be popular just because it's charizard like that alone makes it popular even though i don't think it's like that good yeah all right so next up we need to find the last two decks on the first page uh parker mm -hmm. what do you think the last two decks on the first page of the graphic will be last two decks on the first page let's go are they gonna jam palkia together or they Actually, probably will. They It'll... probably will. Yeah. Yeah. Good good chance the last two decks are like Palkia and Dragapult. Dragapult probably Dragapult, yeah. then Palkia. We think Drago's uh, yeah, not so... making the top six. I, that's I mean, that's the thing. Like, I was like, it's gotta be Dragapult, Drag it's gotta be Drago, Dragapult, or Palkia. One right, of those it's, it's one, one of those three has to be off, right? Yeah. But I don't know. I I think Drago I... stocks are just down right now. That's my I... issue. I think it goes Dragapult, and then if they jam them together, Palkia, but if not, then Drago. It'll probably get jammed together for Palkia. That that makes Palkia probably more popular. So I think I think you have to give it to Palkia, to be honest. Yeah, for the for the board, but for here, maybe we put the percentage higher for Reggie Drago by itself. Yeah. So we'll Dragapult, what, nine? Yeah, nine percent. Yeah. And then Drago, like, like eight. Yeah, and Palkia would probably be closer to ten percent combined. Total. Combined, yeah. yeah. So seven here and three here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so next we're getting into some of the control variants. I think these are going to be all pretty low. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, with these decks is, like, they're not that popular. There's a good chance you can go through the entire tournament without seeing one. Yeah, I'm just going to put all the control decks at 3%. Yeah, they're, like, yeah, very, very... Thorns has a better shot of being, like, 5%, to be honest. Like, yeah. I, I think Thorns could be a 5 to 6% meta share, though. I, I do too, like four and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't see like Thorns is like a legit deck that I think actually people will like consider for the tournament. Turbo Moon four. Mm, I could see Turbo Moon being lower than four. It's just I don't see the hype for it right now, right? Probably like two so? percent. Yeah. I think Turbo Moon will see as much play as Snorlax. Like two percent of the meta. Or everything Gardevoir is gonna land. Two percent, <laughs> Gardevoir. I mean, okay, maybe three percent. Maybe I don't want to be that mean. Three percent, yeah. No, Dude, I, are people no one's playing, playing Gardevoir, Gardevoir right now. It's just not a good time. More people playing Thorns than Gardevoir. Yep, yes, hundred hundred percent, hundred percent. I think so. because because Lugia stock is so high right now, it's just so good for Thorns. There's Yikes. yeah, Gardevoir. Okay. Really Gardevoir. Like, who's playing Gardevoir right now? It's just getting farmed by all these like Dustro decks. I I just can't see it. Listen, our last guest, Henry Chow, would beg to differ. <laughs> yeah, but that was, I mean, he cooked up a completely different list, though, <laughs> than, like, the, the Devo Mimikyu stuff. But, yeah, I, I just, I can't see Gardevoir being any higher than, like, a 3% meta deck. All it's right. okay. just not a good time to play it. All right, so last two up, we got Maridon and Goldango. Where do those land as far as meta percentage? Maridon has a chance of being around 5%. Goldango, 5%. I, I can see him seeing the same play rate. I think we're right on slightly higher than Dango. Yeah, okay, I would say like maybe like seven and five was kind of what I was thinking. Maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but seven yeah. five is actually pretty accurate. We'll, we'll do six five and then five just to. Yeah, that's probably more fair actually. Okay. All right. 210%. 200. Mm -hmm. Wait, why are we 10% over? Is that the point? We're too like generous that? with our numbers. <laughs> oh boy. We can't do math here. Uh, this this is too high, guys. We gotta we gotta lower some stuff. Is it because there's two point there's two point five? That's why. Is that why? It probably yeah. I would imagine it's because of the two point five things you have. No. No. No, it's uh -huh. a third, it's a point five. The heck! I can't it's math whole, either. Then apparently, ten, what the heck? It's a whole ten percent. And we gotta find room for another category. Are we gonna get rid of some percentages somewhere, guys? Uh, uh, Dango down to four. Mm -hmm. Uh, Trappa goes down a percent. Uh, Helk does ignore down a percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Drago down, Charizard down. Charizard should probably st well, I mean nine percent, yeah, yeah, nine percent sounds fine. Uh, uh so that's a hundred right there. Yeah. So then we gotta get rid of we gotta get rid of like another five percent for like the other. Well cloth goes in other. Turbo Moon probably goes in other. Yeah, yeah. Um Yeah, we'll just leave these percentages for like other. Yeah, that's fair. Palkia Noctowl probably goes down a few percents. <clears throat> 2.5. yeah, let's just leave these in the other category and leave that six percent for other. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm smart okay for with opinion. that. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's put our hundred back here because that makes sense. <laughs> 194%. okay, this is our tier list. Are we going with this? <laughs> yeah, I think that works. Yep. Yeah. I like it. Oops, All right. Decent. Let's book it. All right. Well, let's start to wrap up the episode. We got some meta prediction questions for us to run through. Uh, are you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. All right. LDF, you, you, you kick it off. Uh, what deck below A tier has a chance to make the yeah, top eight? Deck below A tier, making top So eight. you've got Uh, like Goldango, Maridon, Charizard, Drago, Bolt, Snorlax, and Thorns in B tier. uh, I'm going to go with Thorns or Maridon. Thorns Just, or Maridon? yeah, fast yellow decks that like auto win. Seems pretty good. Thorns or Maridon, I like it. What about you, Parker? Mm, I'm gonna go with Lax. Ew. Uh, look, man, like There's someone's a shot. gonna, someone's gonna like, uh, Lax or Zard. <clears throat> okay. All right. Next question, Parker, you first. What's the best version of control? Snorlax, Thorns, or Pidgeot control? I think Pidgeot, personally. What will have the best finish? I just said Lax would make pop eight. <laughs> uh, but, true, I, but, true. I, I, but I don't know. Like, I, I think I think someone really good with Pidgeot will will, will take it there. Like okay. maybe not win, but I think that's the highest placing. Um LDF, what same question? Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Snorlax. For both? Be best deck and best finish? Yep. Okay. All right, next up. Uh, LDF, you kick it off. Most popular A spec in top eight. Uh, most popular A spec is going to be Prime Catcher. Parker? Uh, I have almost no doubt in my mind that it'll be Prime Catcher. Nah. Seeker Box. <laughs> Imagine. Brother. We love Seeker Box around here. True. How'd that go for you last time? Uh, hey, it won. Did it? Didn't it win True. a tournament recently or whatever? Yeah, I won Baltimore. Yeah. Oh, I guess yeah. it did. Yeah. But all the A-tier decks, apart from Lugia and Dragapult, are on Prime, so I gotta nah. give it to Prime. Nah. Dragapult's <laughs> playing Crystal. Yeah. I don't know if Dragapult can make top 8, though. Or I think it will, but... I think... Eh. I think it'll still be Prime Catcher. There's a better chance of multiple Tropicos being in top 8 than multiple Dragapult. <clears throat> All right, all right. Parker, what's the most underrated deck in the format? Lost box with Okie Dokie in it. Woo! <laughs> ironically, dogs. ironically, my answer was also going to be Lost Box. Without we, we didn't talk though. about it at <laughs> all, right? Like it's yeah. nowhere. It's a it's a C tier deck by in my opinion, but I think Lost Box is, is like if you want to play it, it's not a bad time. You know something wild I was thinking about today? Hmm. That like All the Tropagoses are playing Colrus Tenacity now. Mm -hmm. Do you ever, if you're not playing Tropagos, or even if you are playing Tropagos, do you ever play a one of Kiram for the mirror? Or for whatever, right? Like, do you ever do that? I actually don't hate that. What the heck? That's actually kind of smart. I was cooking this earlier and I didn't think about it I'd say it at the time because it wasn't like a good time to say it, but it it depends if they play it though, because like it could be a dead card most of the time, but If they know you play it, it's awkward, but it does force Yeah. them to play differently, though. They can't just immediately go for the Colrus to guarantee the pop-off turn, Yeah. knowing that you have a Kyurem. Yeah, exactly. Hmm, maybe. Bro's we'll cooking. have to, we'll have to test at the Airbnb. Yes, sir. But then Down. you also, then you also have to play Cologne. No, but Tropicals doesn't play Manaphy. Yes, they do. No. 
Uh, I don't think they do. Play the booth a lot. Well, Grant Manley played Ma- uh, Manaphy. Yeah, yeah, but and what, and what everyone's going to net Brass. deck toward. Everyone's <laughs> net decking toward, and everyone's net decking toward in Kieran's list. They're not gonna. They're not gonna okay. play. Uh, they're not gonna play Manaphy. <clears throat> All right. There's so... a low chance the Duskull decks play Manaphy this weekend. Parker said Lost Box. So is your is your deck Lost Box two LDF most underrated? Yeah, my I have it for Turbo like Thorns Bear Hands Pile probably pretty solid. Yellow is pretty good right now. The deck also Lost Box has Sableye. Sableye is really good right now. Greninja is also really good. Uh, the deck gets the ability to use Greninja really quickly, which is a very big positive about playing the deck. Kind of like how Palkia gets to abuse Greninja, so does Lost Box. You just have to pick out what attackers are best right now. Personally, if I'm playing Lost Box, I'm playing. Hands with either Raikou or Thorns, and then maybe I'm playing like a Spirit Tomb in the deck or a double mana fee. Um, or I'm also playing something like a uh mm-hmm. I'm not playing Roy Moon. Uh, maybe double Sableye. Yeah. So Sableye's just insane right now. Sableye's pretty good right now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's like I, I don't know. Like I'm I'm scared of the Duskinors and stuff, but they are giving up a one prize for a one prize kind of thing. It's not that bad. Also, like what I find, like if you're playing against a Dusknor deck, if you get turned to ninja, you can take out the Duskulls, or you can get a fast Sableye off, and then you can Sableye the Duskulls, because all the Duskulls have six HP. That's yeah. my logic. It's yeah. actually not that bad. If Lost Box pops off, if it bricks, okay, you're gonna get farmed. But any deck get farmed if you brick in Dustnor. That's my sure. logic. Sure. So like basically, yeah. Yeah. If, if you get to pop off and get turned to uh two prizes with your Dinger Sableye, you're probably chilling. I just yeah. think you have to I think the only good way to play the deck right now is with like the Hedrick style of like Pokey Stop, heavy yeah. vacuum, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting. Um, all right, so last question, and we'll jump off. Parker, we're gonna let you go first on this one. What deck wins a Louisville Regional Championships? X X Dust Snor deck. Nope, can't. Nope, wrong. Can't do that. Uh... Hello, everyone. Sorry to bother you during the podcast, but while we wait on Parker to decide on what deck's gonna win the Louisville Championships. I just want to say thank you for listening to our podcast. Please press the subscribe button below on YouTube. Um, also, Maddox is very sorry he couldn't be here this week, but he's left a special message for you, and I'll play that now. Hey, everyone. Bummed I couldn't be there this week, but big shout-out to LDF and Eric and Parker for holding down without me. Uh, ready for you all to go and have a great time at Louisville. I will see you all there. Ready for you all to do well. Did want to send you a little bit of my takes on the Louisville meta along with the rest of the guys. Uh, so first off, the decks that I'm looking to beat are for sure Dragapult. Again, just one in Dortmund. Very solid list now. People are going to be bringing it, as well as Lugia. Remains to be very good. And Raging Bolt, everyone's favorite deck to play. So be ready for those decks. And also, if you've not played a game against the Turtles in Terrapagos EX, uh, you better, because the deck is good. And if you're not ready for it, it will run you over. Uh, going into some of the questions the guys had, uh, what deck below A tier is the best chance to make top eight? Listen, I'm a believer in the people. Uh, top four in Joinville, top 16 in Lima, People's Champion, <clears throat> is going to make a top eight in North America. Give me Cloth, because that'd be awesome, right? Uh, best version of Control. Controls in, control archetypes are in a tough spot, just with so much Duskinore and how fast the format is. Um, I think the deck that holds up the best of the Control archetypes into the meta right now is Iron Thorns, just because it can hold up with those uh, slow decks, sorry, the fast decks, and um, at the same time, you know, it doesn't fall over to Duskinore too easily. Most popular ace spec. Listen, Prime Catcher is just way too good right now, and like every single deck is playing it. So I think Prime Catcher, without a doubt, is going to be the most popular ace spec in top eight. Uh, most underrated deck in the meta. So somehow Lugia is still underrated, despite being around forever, being very, very good, and people doing very, very well with it. Um, I think people are not going to be playing their temples or e hammers. So if you're listening to this, play temple, play e hammer. I know that I will. Um, another honorable mention here is that Reggie Drago's kind of fallen off in performance a little bit, but it's still a very, very good deck. Which leads me to what deck wins. I really want to say Reggie Drago. I've been enjoying it for a while, but I don't know if it quite makes it. And it's probably because there's a Lugia kicking around in top eight. Uh, either Rahul Ready continuing his tear or Rahul Ready copycat also playing Lugia. And give me Lugia as the Louisville Regional Champion. Okay, that was Maddox's thoughts on the Louisville Regional Championships. Um, thank you, Maddox, for doing that for us. Um, now, back to Parker's decision. You know what? Lugia. Lugia's fucking with Lugia? <laughs> Wait, is it Rahul? True. I don't know. Could be. Could be. Could be. LDF, what is your pick? Uh, I think Chirapagos has a good shot. 
it's finally maybe time for Tropicos to take home a dub. I'm not just one special. <laughs> I I guess that's not am, a regional. But... yeah, it's not a reason, but it is a major. I am gonna say that Reggie Drago V Star takes it home. Okay, the underdog. People are sleeping on it. I I think that'd be my most underrated deck right now. People are sleeping on it. It's still very very good. Um, you go second. You know, there is some scary stuff to go second against, but it's fine. Coin flip. You just win the coin flip and you move on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good good try. Yeah, I remember well, that was my logic playing Trevenant at a uh, Fort Wayne, and I, and I went one for nine on coin flips. <clears throat> brutal. True. Well, that's gonna do it for this week's episode of the Beach Court Podcast. LDF, thank you so much for coming on to the place of Maddox. We couldn't have done yeah, it without thanks you. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yeah, you got any shout outs for any of your sponsors or anyone you want to throw out or your coaching or whatever before you go? Yeah, uh, shout out to uh, Card Cavern and TC Evolutions. If you get anything over at those sites, use code LDF. Save 10%? Yeah, 5% on uh, Card Cavern. And I, I forget uh, the TC Evolution amount. Still okay. fresh, but. Right, still yeah. fresh. 5%. <laughs> True. Yeah, check him out on YouTube. Could subscribe be to him. Here. Subscribe yeah. here. Uh, he'll be back. Thank you so much for having uh, joining us. No um, and for hopefully, me on. we'll see you in Louisville. That's the hope. Uh, I know Parker is going to see you at some point. So um, yeah, he's driving yeah. for sure, but we're still figuring it out with the flight. Hopefully, y'all can make it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it all way. goes. We'll yeah, find hopefully. A way. Hopefully. All right, that's going to do it for us. Thanks, everyone, for joining and uh, catch you in two weeks. Yep. Thank see you. you.